Hey, what's happening guys? Today, I want you to take a look at this circuit, which is a variation of a VinBridge oscillator. And we're gonna talk about why it works. I just want you to know this video is brought to you by our friends at Solder Stick. Check out the video at the end. There's a link down below. You can get 20% off. Okay, so this circuit that you see here is a take on a VinBridge oscillator. What makes it that? Well, you see right, right here, we have a series circuit. And then right here, we have a parallel circuit using the same values. And we're getting our output from the junction of those circles, circle, the junction of those circuits. Oi, 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 sometimes. Now, the VinBridge oscillator is called that because it, it's based on a frequency selective form of a whetstone or wheatstone bridge. It is a two stage RC coupled amplifier circuit, and it has stability at its resonant frequency, as I can show you if I can find the right button there and there. There we go. So over here, you can see the sine wave that comes from this. And we're feeding our circuit with 12 and negative 12. So we're getting, what, where are we at? 12.05. And you see, we even have just a very slight gain, but that's, that's neither here nor there. That's not the part, the point of our circuit. And you can also see here that we're getting just a little bit of clipping there because we are exceeding Okay, so let's talk about we have our parallel circuit here, right? And over here, we have the series circuit. So what are we thinking? Are we thinking that it is basically a high pass filter, that it's connected to a low pass filter? which is going to produce some selective second order frequency and phase dependent bandpass filter. Yeah, basically it's a bandpass filter with a little bit of gain. Now you see at low frequencies, you're gonna find out that the series capacitor here is very high. The resist, it's reactance, I'm sorry, it's reactance is very high. So it's going to act like an open circuit blocking any input signal at our VN. So we've got no output signal. Now at high frequencies, the parallel capacitor becomes very low. So it acts a bit like a short circuit across the output. So again, there's no output. So somewhere in between these two, oops, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> somewhere in between there's these two points between C1 being open, or C2 being open, C1 being shorted, the V out is gonna reach its maximum value. And that point where those two things happen is the resonant frequency of the VinBridge oscillator. At this frequency, its resistance is equal to its reactance. So if we start the thing flying here, you can see it's swinging from 12 to 12. And if we bring in the graphing calculator here, again, you can see that quite well there. Now, how could we get rid of this clipping here? Well, you could take this 10K resistor here, make it a 10K potentiometer, and just tune it down a little bit if that bothered you. How do we find the frequency? Well, our frequency is 1 over 2 pi RC squared. That's our, our resonant frequency. Just remember, make sure if you do the math out, you do your math in ohms and farads and count your number of zeros so everything goes right. Otherwise, sometimes things don't work out that way. You know what? I misspoke a little bit. I said we should change this one to a potentiometer. I'm wrong. We should change this one to the potentiometer. Because what we're doing here is we're feeding back the outputs from both these circuits into the op amp. 
and then right here we've created a bit of a voltage divider so if we adjust that down a little bit that should uh, change our clipping let's 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 try that so we'll stop this this is 47k let's see what happens we make it 33k put in your votes is the clipping going to get better or is the clipping going to get worse we begin the simulation and let's have a look at the scope oh the clipping got even worse it's like you could have predicted it <laughs> so we'll put this back to 47 or should we go higher let's say uh 51 okay start it up here comment the graphics oh what did I do did I break it yeah I broke that a little bit I've adjusted them so I can get this is about as close as I can get by just putting in values of 110k and 51k so you see I've raised them both a little bit uh, we try a little bit more I guess 51k try I know these are not normal values there's 55k well, that's a little bit better 55k 110 go uh, 120k nope we're back where we were so let's go 105k how did that break it Back we go to 110k. Which worked before and now it says it's broken. <laughs> That's funny. All right, let me fix it. There we go. I think we got it back in gear. Yeah, we'll just stick with that. One last thing, um, if you've been taught the VinBridge oscillator before, you should be looking for a light bulb. We simply replace the light bulb in the feedback loop with a resistor. Either way to work. I hope this uh, taught you guys a little something about the VinBridge oscillator, how to set it up, use it. If it did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching. Big thanks for Solder Stick for uh, sponsoring. That's it. I'm out. Peace. Today's video is brought to you by Solder Stick. Solder Stick makes quick, waterproof wire connections that last a long time and protect whatever it is you're working on. They sell different types of connectors, everything from T tap connectors which allow you to put a splice into the middle of a wire without having to cut the wire or remove any insulation. Waterproof uh, melt butt connector kits. Spade connector kits, which if you work on cars or boats, you know how useful they will be. And the same goes for ring connectors. When you need to connect a wire to something with a nut and a bolt, this is simply the way to do it. Solder stick. Remember them for all of your wire connection needs. There's a link down below for a discount.